Welcome to the public hearing for the State Road 500 US 441 design project. Matt Hassan is the Florida Department of Transportation project manager for this project. This access management public hearing is concerning proposed median modifications and roadway improvements on State Road 500, also known as US 441, from State Road 46 to State Road 44 in Mount Dora. The project is proposing to widen this section of State Road 500, US 441, from a four-lane rural roadway to a six-lane urban roadway. This hearing is being held to allow persons the opportunity to express their views related to the proposed median modifications and roadway improvements. FDOT staff and other members of the project team will be available to discuss the project and answer questions. This hearing presentation will include introductions of the project team and any elected and appointed officials in attendance an overview of the project, a description of the proposed improvements, and the project schedule. This hearing will be recorded by a court reporter. All oral proceedings will be included in the public hearing transcript and will become part of the project's official records. At the conclusion of the presentation, there will be a 10-minute break. During the break, attendees may request a speaker card or discuss the project with members of the project team. After the break, attendees who completed a speaker's card will be given an opportunity to speak into a microphone to provide their testimonies regarding the project. Speaker cards will be available at the sign-in table or will be distributed to additional attendees who wish to make a verbal statement. The FDOT project manager will introduce the members of the project team and others in attendance. The Florida Department of Transportation complies with various non-discrimination laws and regulations, including Title VI of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. Public participation is solicited without regard to race, color, national origin, age, sex, religion, disability, or family status. Persons wishing to express their concerns relative to FDOT compliance with Title VI and or Title VIII may do so by contacting Jennifer Smith, FDOT District 5 Title VI Coordinator, or Jacqueline Paramore, the State Title VI Coordinator. Their contact information is provided on a sign displayed at this hearing. All inquiries or complaints will be handled according to FDOT procedure and in a prompt and courteous manner. The Florida Department of Transportation is conducting this public hearing concerning the proposed median modifications and roadway improvements to State Road 500, U.S. 441, from State Road 46 to State Road 44, in the city of Mount Dora, Lake County, Florida, in compliance with Chapter 335, Section 199, Chapter 339, Section 155, and Chapter 120.525, Florida Statutes. This hearing is being held to allow the general public an opportunity to express their views relative to the proposed roadway and access management changes. This public hearing was advertised as follows. Display ads were published in the Orlando Sentinel Lake County Edition on August 23, 2015 and September 6, 2015. An ad was published in the Florida Administrative Register. Letters were sent by email to local officials and agencies on August 21, 2015. Letters were mailed to property owners within 500 feet of the project right-of-way on August 24, 2015. Notices were hand-delivered to businesses and residents located directly along the project corridor on September 8, 2015. A notice was placed on the FDOT meetings website at http forward slash forward slash dot us and a notice was placed on the CFL Roads website at www.cflroads.com. 
The purpose of this public hearing is to present the preliminary roadway improvement design plans for this project to the public and to present the proposed changes to the existing access management plan or median modifications along State Road 500 US 441 within the project limits and receive public input on the changes. The project limits begin north of State Road 46 and end at State Road 44. The existing road throughout the project limits is a four-lane, divided, rural roadway. There are five-foot paved shoulders bordering the outside travel lanes on both sides of the road. The posted speed limit is 55 miles per hour. The proposed roadway will be widened to six 12-foot travel lanes, three in each direction, with a raised median, six and one-half foot paved inside shoulders, and six and one half foot paved outside shoulders that will accommodate bicycle lanes. The project includes a curb and gutter drainage system and a five foot sidewalk on both sides of the road within the existing right of way. The recommended posted speed limit will be decreased from 55 to 50 miles per hour. Additional right of way will be required for a stormwater pond and the associated inflow and outflow drainage easements. Drainage and stormwater management facility improvements will be required for the roadway improvement to comply with local jurisdictions and St. John's River Water Management District criteria. For this project, we anticipate right-of-way acquisition of 7.2 acres for a stormwater pond and associated drainage easements. Additional right-of-way required for the project includes a strip taking along the south side of Wolf Branch Road from the intersection of State Road 500 to approximately 100 feet east of the racetrack driveway, as well as corner cliffs on the east and west sides of Donnelly Avenue on the south side of State Road 500. There will be no relocation of families or businesses. The FDOT has been working with the property owners who will be affected by this acquisition. This is an illustration of the proposed widening improvements. The existing four-lane rural roadway will be widened to a six-lane urban roadway. The proposed improvements include an exclusive right turn lane at Donnelly Street, southbound. The access management class will be changed from a Class 3 to Class 5 from Lincoln Avenue to State Road 44. The existing access management classification is Class 3 throughout the study limits and to the south. West of State Road 44, the access management classification changes to Class 5. The existing posted speed limit varies from 50 miles per hour to 55 miles per hour throughout the project limits. The access management classification will be changed from Class 3 to Class 5 from Lincoln Avenue to State Road 44, and the posted speed limits will be from 45 miles per hour to 50 miles per hour. This project will tie into the State Road 46 interchange to the south and the six-lane section west of State Road 44 to the north. This project is consistent with regional and local transportation planning. Access management is the planning and control of the location, spacing, design, and operation of driveways, median openings, and street connections to a roadway. Access management designates where and how vehicles enter and exit a roadway, helps protect public investment in roadways, and improves public safety by preserving mobility, reducing delays, and minimizing crashes. By following access management principles, we can limit the number of conflict points on a roadway, separate the conflict points, reduce or remove the number of vehicles that turn or cross the lanes of traffic, remove excessive vehicle stacking from the lanes of traffic, improve safety, and improve roadway capacity. Conflict points are locations along a roadway where the paths of two vehicles can legally cross. 
Each conflict point is a location that has the potential for a crash. A goal of this project is to improve safety on the State Road 500 U.S. 441 corridor. One way to achieve this goal is to limit the number of conflict points by constructing directional median openings. This will restrict the number of lanes vehicles can cross, which will in turn eliminate conflict points and increase safety along the roadway and reduce traffic delays. The location of median openings and the type of opening are based on roadway classifications and minimum separation or spacing standards. The standards used by the Florida Department of Transportation provide the optimal balance between access and mobility. U-turns are often much safer than direct left turns, especially on high volume, high speed or congested roadways. They have also been shown to reduce the potential for accidents. Research on the safety of U-turns indicates that crashes causing injuries or fatalities are reduced by 27% and total crash rates are reduced by 18% through encouraging right turns followed by U-turns compared to direct left turns. Without access management, businesses can be hurt by congested high collision roadways near their entrance. In Central and South Florida, studies have shown that the majority of corridor business operators saw an increase or no change in their customer traffic. The department's access management standards are intended to provide the optimal balance between access and mobility. By improving access management, this will likely have a positive impact on safety by reducing the number of crashes and injuries, help to improve traffic flow, and ultimately shorten travel times within the project corridor. The proposed Access Class 5 design standards permit more closely spaced directional median openings and driveway connections than Class 3 to allow increased access to land uses. South of Lincoln Avenue, the access classification will remain Class 3. The illustrations on this slide shows the current vehicle turning movements at Pine Avenue, as well as the turning movements after the access management changes have been made. This change will restrict the number of lanes vehicles can cross, which will in turn eliminate conflict points. This will increase safety along the roadway and reduce traffic delays. This slide shows the alternative routes for the traffic movements from Pine Avenue westbound onto State Road 500 southbound and from Pine Avenue eastbound onto State Road 500 northbound. This graphic is also included in our display area where project representatives can assist you with any questions you may have. If you would like to learn more about access management, you can download a copy of the Florida Department of Transportation's Access Management Brochure for more information. Go to the website at www.dot.state.fl.us and type Access Management Brochure in the search box at the upper right hand corner of the home page. The design phase for this project is estimated to be complete in early 2016. The construction cost estimate is currently $14.8 million. The project is not currently funded or scheduled for construction. For information about this project, please visit www.cflroads.com. This website is the FDOT's living platform to keep you and the public informed of ongoing and future projects. You are encouraged to visit this website, which contains the links to easy access to online information and to stay current with the status of the project. Once you have accessed the project website, you will be able to view the current project schedule details project contact information, and access project files such as this presentation. On the main page from the pull-down menu labeled Road, select State Road 500, and then click in the search box. When the new page opens, click the link labeled Design, and then select the project number for this project, 
which is 429356-1. Thank you for taking the time to listen to this presentation. As mentioned earlier, project representatives will be available to discuss the project and answer your questions throughout the evening. Comment forms will be available at the sign-in table. You can fill out a comment form and drop it in the comments box, or take one with you and mail it to the address shown on the form. You may also email your comments to eileen.lasour at qcausa.com. There is another way you can submit your comments about this project. Go to the CFL Roads website online at www.cflroads.com and use the Submit Comments and Questions link on the project webpage. All comments that are received by Monday, September 28, 2015 will become part of the public record for this meeting. You may also contact Matt Hassan, the FDOT Project Manager, or Eileen Lasour, the Consultant Public Involvement Coordinator, by mail, telephone, or email. At this point in the public hearing, there will be a 10-minute break. Attendees may review the display boards and talk to members of the project team about questions or concerns. Attendees may also speak to the court reporter if they would like to make a public statement without having to speak in front of the whole group. If you wish to make a formal verbal public statement or ask a question for the public record, you will need a speaker card. Speaker cards will be available at the sign-in desk or you may remain sitting, raise your hand, and we will bring you one. Please fill out one of the speaker cards with your name and contact information. Your name will be called for you to come up to the microphone and provide oral comments in the order in which we received your cards. You will be given up to two minutes to speak. Your verbal statements will become part of the official record. You may also complete one of the comment forms and drop it in the box provided on the comments table at the public hearing. If you prefer, you may mail your written comments by September 28, 2015. The address is provided on the comment form. All comments received, whether written or verbal, will become part of the official record. After the break, the public hearing will reconvene and continue with public testimony. If you are holding a completed speaker card, please give it to a team representative wearing a name tag. If you have not received a speaker request card and wish to speak, please raise your hand so you can receive a card to fill out. Please remember that written statements and exhibits may be presented in lieu of or in addition to oral statements. All written material received at this public hearing or postmarked no later than 10 days following the date of this public hearing will become a part of the public record for the hearing. Contact information is provided on the comment form. All questions or comments will be responded to individually in writing at the end of the formal 10-day comment period. We ask that you limit your formal statements to two minutes per person. The two-minute speaker limit may not be extended with any unused time from other speakers. If you would like to record a longer comment orally, the court reporter will be available to record your comments after this comment period. We will then call upon those who have turned in speaker cards. When your name is called, please come to the microphone so the court reporter will be able to get a complete record of your comments. When you come forward, please state your name and address. If you represent an organization, municipality, or other public body, please provide that information as well. Following the 10-minute break, if you have completed a speaker's card, please repeat your name and address. If not, state your name and address and complete a speaker's card after you have given your statement for the public record. The verbatim transcript of the hearing's oral proceedings, together with all written material received as part of the hearing record and all studies, displays, and informational material provided at the hearing, will be made a part of the project decision-making process and will be available at the district office for public review upon request.
Thank you for watching this public hearing presentation. We appreciate your interest and for providing your input into this project.